When you think of Kerala, you probably see lush green hills, backwaters, then boats breezing through them. But instead, imagine your boat got stuck in weeds and the fire department had to come to rescue you. Only this is not imagination. It actually happened. Kerala's waterways are beautiful tourist attractions, but they are also a critical functionality. Hundreds of boats move on them daily, and lakhs of people travel on these boats to work, to school, and to their place of business. But these days, the boats don't glide the way they used to. Fishing nets come back lighter, canals feel tighter. This isn't a story about floods, and it isn't about plastic. It's about how a land built entirely around water is slowly being suffocated by an unexpected guest that stayed too long and is taking up too much space. I'm Lavanya, and in today's episode of The Climate Brief, we are in Kerala's Kutanad region where a plant that doesn't belong here has found the perfect conditions to take over. In Kerala's Alapura district, in the Kutanad region, water that once supported livelihoods is now being choked by a green invader. And that green invader is the water hyacinth. Water hyacinth is not native to Kerala or to any other corner of India. It belongs to the Amazon Basin in Brazil. Its beauty took it all over the globe. Cut to today. It is one of the 100 most invasive species on the planet, according to the IUCN. But there is a reason why it got that tag. These water hyacinths can double their size every 5 to 14 days, multiply more than 100 fold in just 23 days, and each plant produces thousands of seeds annually. These seeds can remain viable for more than 28 years and can remain dormant for 15 to 20 years during drought periods and the moment water returns, they come right back. And when the water gets polluted and nutrient heavy, this growth goes out of control. The plant spreads fast, forms a thick green blanket and slowly starts choking freshwater ecosystems. And that is exactly what happened in Kutanad. This weed has taken over canals and backwaters, covering 75-94% to 94% of the water surface. Fishing gets hampered, irrigation channels get choked, health risks rise for local communities. Let's dig deeper into the impacts of water hyacinth infestation. A drop in oxygen levels. These weeds create a thick mat-like structure on the water. This blocks the sunlight from reaching the plants inside the water, and no sunlight means no photosynthesis means no oxygen. And it gets worse. When these hyacinths die, they rot in the water. That decomposition sucks out whatever little oxygen is left. In fact, studies found that in 2019, dissolved oxygen levels in many parts of Vempanad Lake dropped to just 4 mg per litre. Healthy aquatic life needs 5 to 7. The result? Fish stocks, once the main source of income for people here, have dropped by up to 50% in some areas. Impact on farming. These mat structures are partially blocking the water flow as well. Blocked water flow disrupts irrigation. Before planting, farmers often have to manually remove these weeds, which means extra labor, extra time and extra cost. Transportation. In some areas, boats are the main mode of transportation. But with these weeds taking over the canals, the boats struggle to move. Engines break down and repairs get expensive. In some cases, water transport shuts down completely. In April 2024, the State Water Transport Department had to cancel all seven services between Kottayam and Alapura for more than a week. In one incident, 25 passengers on board a boat got stuck in the weed-infested waters near Vettikattur and had to be rescued by fire and rescue personnel after a few hours. Economic losses. Put it all together. Fishing losses, boat damage, health expenses, and families can lose up to 3,000 rupees every month. That's nearly 20% of households' income for many. That's not just another statistic. That is survival. So how did a peaceful, paddy-growing region like Kuttanad end up here? That's the story in the next chapter. Let's start by understanding Kuttanad itself. Kuttanad is a massive wetland spread across nearly 900 square kilometers. Located in the southern part of India's largest Ramsar site, the Vembanad Coal Wetland, and along India's longest lake, the Vembanad Lake. What makes Kutanad truly unique is this. Nearly two-thirds of the region lies below the sea level. 
in some places up to 2 meters below. People could live and farm here only because the land was reclaimed. By 2013, studies showed that over half of Kottanad, nearly 550 square kilometers, was reclaimed land. Today, more than 2 million people live here. Houses, roads, and buildings they sit on embankments raised over wetlands and lake beds. The result? The land's natural ability to absorb water has drastically reduced. Agriculture plays a huge role too. About one third of Kottanad is paddy fields. Today, farming has gone from seasonal to year-round. To support this below sea level farming, a major engineering project was built in 1974, the Thanir Mukkam Salt Water Barrier. Its job was simple: keep salt water out, hold fresh water in, and protect paddy during the dry season. And in that sense, it worked. But there was a catch. Before the barrier, salt water flows and tides helped flush the system. After this, the water stopped flowing freely. Pollutants got trapped. The system slowly turned stagnant. Now the barrier has been here for 50 years. So why has this problem exploded only in the last decade? The answer lies in what is entering the water. One, fertilizer. Chemical farming became normal after the green revolution. Fertilizers rich in nitrogen and phosphorus began washing out of paddy fields straight into canals, rivers, and eventually the lake. This excess nutrition has created a fertile ground for hyacinths to grow rapidly. Two, sewage. As towns and cities around Vembanad including Kochi have expanded so has wastewater much of it still flows untreated into the backwaters and then came tourism since the 1990s over a million tourists visit this region every year resorts hotels and houseboats multiplied but wastewater systems didn't keep up raw sewage solid waste even fuel spills many ended up directly in the water put it all together fertilizer and pesticide runoff sewage stagnant water and encroachment and you create the perfect storm nutrient rich effluents slow moving water and an open invitation for water hyacinth to take over mechanical removal doesn't really solve the problem fishermen and local communities remove these thick mats sometimes by hand sometimes using machines but within weeks the weed is back because removal only treats the symptom not the root cause it's like bailing water out of a sinking boat without fixing the leak if you remove the weed but don't stop the pollution water hyacinth simply grows back again and again and again but at the same time some interesting ideas are emerging from the community in parts of kottanad people are experimenting with turning water hyacinth into bio fertilizer as an alternative to chemical fertilizers the idea makes sense Microbes living in the plant can support crop growth and soil health. Will it work at scale? Honestly, it's too early to say. But one thing is clear: no single solution will fix this. Removing weeds alone won't work. Even converting them into biofertilizer won't be enough. What's needed is a bigger shift: reducing polluted runoff from farms, stopping untreated sewage from entering water bodies, and enforcing stronger water quality rules. because unless the nutrients stop flowing in the weed will keep coming back the story of water hyacinth in kottanad isn't really about a weed it's about a series of small invisible decisions what we put in our fields where our sewage goes how we try to control the flow of water individually they don't seem dramatic but over time they sure add up for decades kottanad was reshaped to suit human needs more food more homes more tourism more control over nature And for a while it seemed like it worked but nature keeps its own accounts when nutrients rise when water stops flowing when wetlands lose their ability to breathe something fills that gap in this case it's water hyacinth kutnad is a warning but it's also a lesson across india in lakes rivers and wetlands we are engineering nature harder than ever often without thinking about the long term cost water hyacinth isn't the problem it's the signal flare Whether Kutnad's waterways return to being lifelines or remain choked arteries depends on one choice. Do we treat this as a one-off nuisance or do we recognize it for what it really is? A system failure that needs a system level fix. I'm Lavanya and this is the Climate Brief. If this video made you think, share it and subscribe for more such stories of known places and their lesser known crises.